Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on longest increasing subsequence. And this is a really common interview problem, so definitely one to know. And this is also one of the rare ones that actually bottom up DP is going to be better and more intuitive than memoization. It's pretty rare. So let's just go over it. Um, so basically, given an array nums, return the length of the longest uh, strictly increasing subsequence. And in this first example, here it is, 2, 3, 7, 1, 1. And I think there are other ones. There's like 2, 3, 7, 18. Um, I think those are the only two. Actually, I think something like 2, 5, 7, 1, 1 or 2, 5, 7, 18 also works. So there's a few different ones. And then the second one, it's just 0, 1, 2, 3, which is length 4. And the third one, it's only length 1. So you have 2,500 numbers and you want to come up with something that ideally runs in n log n as a follow-up, but we'll briefly talk about the normal one and then the follow-up that I think is a little unintuitive. Um, it's it's kind of intuitive, but there are parts that are unintuitive, so I'm gonna talk about that one and that we'll code up that one. So first, let's start with a DP solution. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. So let's just have this. And the common sense for this problem, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's not super difficult. So let's just write out our numbers and we'll go through this example here. So we'll have 10, 9, 2, 5, 3, 7, 101, and 18. And we can get rid of uh, this. And then we can basically copy this again. And this is going to be our solution, right? So this is going to be our original array and this is going to be our solution. So essentially for the solution of this problem, and I'll show you why bottom up is easier. Basically, we're going to use the following um, strategy and it's a little, it's kind of like straightforward. So basically we're going to look when we're at a number, what are all the other numbers before it that are smaller? And then what's the length of their subsequence? And if those numbers are smaller, then we can obviously add our number to those. So for example, Let's say we have some sequence that ends with nine. Let's just say we have a bunch of numbers that end with nine and that length is like five. Well, if we if our new character is 10 and it comes after nine, then we can just be like, okay, so let's just go through all the numbers before 10. Oh, look, here's a nine. Well, that sequence has a length five and we know that we can just put the 10 right behind the nine, right? We can just put the 10 right over here. So we can take whatever the sequence was that ends with nine and add one. And we can do this for every single sequence that ends with a number smaller than 10. So if there's a sequence that ends with eight, let's say that's like length five as well. We can take that as well. We could say like, okay, well we can just take the sequence that ends with eight. We can add 10 to the end of it. And then the sequence, the new sequence length will be whatever it was plus one. So that's going to be essentially our algorithm. So let's walk through this and show how it works. And let's delete all this, delete all this. So the first number, obviously there's nothing to the left of it. So that's just going to be a sequence of one. Then, for nine, we're gonna check, is there anything before nine that's smaller than nine? No, there's not. So that's just gonna be a sequence of one as well. Then we're gonna check for two, is there anything before two that's smaller than two? No, there's only 10 and nine, so sequence of one. Then for the five, is there anything before five that's smaller than five? Yes, there is, there's a two that has a sequence of one. So we can obviously just take the two and add the five to the end of it to make a sequence of two. So this five will have a sequence of two and these numbers are bigger so it doesn't work. Okay, then for the three, is there anything smaller than three? Yes, there is, there's a two with a sequence of one. So we can add the three to the end of the two and that'll make it a sequence of two. Then is there anything smaller than seven? Yes, there is, there's a bunch of stuff. And all of these numbers are smaller than seven. So we can add the seven to the end of any of these. Which one of these gives the biggest sequence? It's one of these two. So we can either have the sequence two, three, seven or two, five, seven, right? And either one of those would be a sequence of three. Then that's because seven is bigger than five and three and two, but five and three have a sequence of two. So if we add the seven to the end, that'll be a sequence of three. Then for 101, all of these numbers work. So which one has the biggest sequence? It's five. So we can just take whatever sequence ends with five, add the 101, that will be a sequence of four. And then for 18, what numbers are smaller than 18? Everything except for the 101. What's the best one to pick? It's going to be this one over here. So we will take the five, add a one, and we'll have a sequence of four. Then after we have all this, we just look which one of these is the biggest. So four is the biggest number, and that's what we return. 
And that's why this is easier with DP. You basically just have a DP array with all zeros. And for every number, you just check the DP of all the previous numbers. Take the biggest one that is smaller than our current number, right? So the number has to be smaller than our current number. So for example, if we're at a nine, we have to pick some number that's less than nine. But out of all those, whichever one has the biggest sequence, take that, add one, and that's how you do it. So that's one way to do it. And it's pretty straightforward. And I think bottom up's a lot easier than memorization to code up that way. So now we're going to talk about the second way to do it. And like I said, it's kind of counterintuitive, but basically you end up using a stack and you build your stack and you replace elements that are worse with elements that are better. So we're going to show how this works. And there are some examples that are counter counterintuitive, but basically what's going to end up happening is your sequence in your stack might not match exactly to your best sequence, but the length will always be correct. And there are like proofs on it. If you want to look, I'm not going to describe it. And honestly, I don't know it well enough to describe it, but I will describe the actual algorithm. And it is something you can use for this. And I, it is fair enough to say like that, like this first example, this, this bottom of DP, if you were never, if you never saw this problem, you could code this up in an interview. The second one, realistically, you can't, it's one of those, like, if you know what you know it, and if you don't, you don't, but we'll go, we're going to go through that one now. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to do, we're going to go through our numbers. We're going to start with a stack of nothing. And we're just going to check for every number. Is it bigger than the last number in our stack? So for this 10, is it bigger? Well, there's nothing in our stack. So we'll just put in a 10. Then we're going to move over here and we're going to check is nine bigger than the last number in our stack? No, it's not. But can we replace anything in our stack with nine? That would be better. Well, if we, only, if we only have one number 10, we'd rather have a nine, right? It's easier to build a bigger sequence with a nine instead of a 10. So we're going to replace this 10 with the nine. And then for the two, do we want to keep the nine or the two? We can't add it to the end. We can't do this, right? Because we have to have an increasing sequence, but we could just replace the nine with the two. So we'll do that because it's better. Now for the five, is five bigger than the last thing in our stack? Yes, it is. So if it's bigger than the last thing in our stack, we can just add it onto our stack and we'll have an increasing sequence. And there we go. Then for the three, is it bigger than the five? No, it's not. But is there any number in here that's better to replace with a three? Yes, there is. We want to replace the five with a three, right? We want to keep our, our increasing sequence as small as possible. So we'll replace the five with the three. Then for the seven, is it bigger than our last element? Yes, it is. So we'll add it in. And for the 101, is it bigger than the last element? Yes, it is. So we'll add it in. And is 18 bigger than the last element? No, it's not. But is there an element that we want to replace with 18? Yes, there is. We'd want to replace this one over here because then we'd still have the same sequence length. We're always going to have the same sequence length or we add something. But now we have this. So this is our sequence. So like I said, there are examples where this basically uh, your last sequence isn't exactly like in this case, this is actually one of the best sequences like this is possible to make. But let's quickly go through an example where it's not possible to make. But it's still the same answer. So we have something like one, two, three, or actually it's one, two, two, six, uh, six, seven, eight. So let's go through this one. So basically this one, obviously when we go to the six, we're going to put in the six, then we're going to put in the seven, then we're going to put in the eight. Then for the two, it is not bigger than eight, but we would want to replace something with the two and we need this to be increasing always. So what would we want to replace? We just replace the six, right? Because that would make our sequence as small as possible. So notice how you can't actually make this, like you can't actually make two, seven, eight, but the sequence is still the same. And the reason you do want to replace this is because later on you might reach some numbers that are better. Like for example, you might reach like a three or a four or something here. Right. And then the three would replace this. And then the four would replace this. And now this is something you can make. So you're not always going to be able to make your sequence, but you will, um, you will always have like the length will always be correct. So let's just write it actually into some kind of like algorithm because I, I quickly showed like what you'd want to replace, but let's write this down like actually logically. So we're going to build a stack for each element in numbers. If stack is, let's just write like a few cases, right? So if stack is empty or if element is bigger than last item, add it in. 
Otherwise, look for the, we basically want to look for the smallest number that we can replace, right? So for example, let's say we have some stuff. Let's say we have, let me just make sure I did this correctly. So let's say we have 258. Let's say we have a three that we're trying to put in. Well, we can't replace numbers that are bigger than it, right? Actually, no, we could. Yeah. So if, if the number here, yeah, I think that's what we want to do. Okay. So we want to actually look for the biggest element we want to look for. So let's write that down. Right. We want to replace the, the biggest element. Cause like if we replace this two with a three, that's not going to help us. Like this is just going to make it bigger. But what we really want to do is replace this five with a three, because then we can make something better later on maybe, right? Like let's say we get a four or something. So we want to look for the biggest element we want to replace and we can't just replace like an eight, for example, right? Because if we replace the eight, this will be increasing. So we want to replace the biggest element we can while, let's write this down, while the stack stays increasing still, right? So if we try to replace something with something that we already have, like if we try to do this, we basically just want to replace the five with a five. We don't want to have duplicate elements. So we either want to like, if we have it in our stack already, we can just throw it out or replace the same thing with the same thing. But if we have, like I said, if we have a number like three, we basically want to replace the leftmost element that is bigger than our number. And that will ensure that our stack stays increasing, right? So if this is bigger than our number, we want to be like, like let's say, let's say we try this number and this is bigger. This is replaceable, but then we have to keep going left. Is this bigger too? Yes, it is. Is this bigger? No, it's not. So we'll replace this one. So basically, if you have a bunch of numbers, like let's say we try this three, but we have a, a, a ton of numbers. So let's say we have like two, four, six, eight, ten, all the way up to like whatever, like a million, right? So let's just say we have a million, 10 to the seventh instead of 10 to the sixth. Hopefully I don't make that mistake again. Um, yeah, so essentially we want to replace this four, but how do we do this quickly? Well, because these numbers are increasing always, we can just binary search for this part. So for every single number that we try to put in, we will binary search in this stack to look for the number that it wants to replace. And remember, you want to replace the leftmost number that is bigger than that with it. And that would work for anything, right? Let's look at another example really quick. Let's get rid of this. Let's just say we have some kind of increasing stack. Let's say we have like two, four, six, 12, 100, and we're putting in whatever, eight. So we basically want eight to replace the leftmost element that is bigger than eight. What's the leftmost element that is bigger than eight? This one over here. So we will replace 12 with an eight and that will maintain our increasing order, right? If we try to replace the hundred with an eight, then that wouldn't. So definitely this is one that's a little bit counterintuitive, but essentially, yeah, you just do a binary search to see where to put it. Then at the very end, your stack, your length of your stack will be your longest increasing subsequence, but the numbers it's in the stack itself won't necessarily be like the ones that, um, the ones that are correct, but the length will always be correct. So it's kind of one of those algorithms that like, it's hard to prove. Like, I think you have to just like, there are proofs for it. It's hard to prove. And I think it is reasonable to come up with, but like I said, this, this edge case where like the, your stuff in the stack won't be exactly what the numbers are is kind of weird right? Where like, you'll have some numbers in here at the end that, that it might not necessarily be the longest increasing subsequence, but the length will always be correct. But now that you know it, I think it's like reasonably easy to do. It's kind of like, you know, if you're learning DP, like I don't think anyone came up with DP by themselves. So for this longest increasing subsequence, this stack trick does work as well. So that's what we're going to code up. So we are going to have a stack and then for num in nums, so essentially, like I said, if there is no stack or if the number is the biggest one so far, so if not stack or num is greater than stack minus one, then we can just append right away and we can just continue. Otherwise we have to actually figure out where to put it. So we're going to say, we're going to try to put it at the end initially, and we're going to try to put it as far left as possible. So initially we'll just put it at the end because we know that at the end it'll always work because if because if this number was bigger than a last element, we could put it in at the end. But let's say our stack is like one, five, eight, 20 or something. 
the number we're putting in has to be 20 or less. So we know that like, this is gonna be our default location. If we don't find anything better, we'll just put it here. And that would make sense, right? It's never gonna be bigger than the last element. Otherwise we would have added it to the end. So now we do a simple binary search. So left, right equals zero and the last location. So result. And while left is less than or equal to right, we get a pivot value. And basically, like I said, if stack P, if the current thing on the stack is greater than or equal to number, we can, that can be our location. So let's say our stack is like one, five, eight, ten. 10. If we're trying to put in a five, it's fine to just override it. But what we don't want to do is something like this, right? We want to make sure we avoid this. So that's why you have to have greater than or equal to because you, you can't have two elements that are the same. So this will ensure that you will never. So what will happen here is like, uh, this, this eight will be greater than the five, right? But this five will also be greater than or equal to the five. So you will just end up overriding the five with the five. So if this is the case, we will just put that as our location and then we will go left and see if there's anything better. And this is the binary search template that I like to use with a result variable. And then anytime I match my condition, I just say, let's move the result variable over there and keep checking other places. That way I don't have to have like less than or L less than or equal to R or something or L less than R. And then I don't have to figure out like, do I return left or right or left minus one or whatever. It's always going to be this result variable. Okay. And then otherwise, otherwise basically our number is smaller than the number we're trying to replace it with. So we have to go right. So we will just go right here. And then, um, uh, yeah. So at the very end, we basically have to add our, uh, so once we get like our result position, we will basically uh, put the number there. So stack at the result position will be number. Then we'll have some kind of stack at the end. So we just have to return the length of that stack. And the length of that stack will be the length of the longest increasing symbol here. Um, so equal. And yeah, definitely, um, if you haven't seen this before, super unintuitive, but it's a lot more efficient than um, the DP solution because the DP solution is basically unsquared, right? For every single index, you have to go through all of the ones before and get the value. So that's unsquared. This one is n log n because we are now binary searching every single index to find the location to put it in. But like I said, not, not super intuitive. And if you haven't seen this during an interview, if you code bottom up DP, I'm sure it'd be fine. Like no one's gonna care about the best solution. So bottom up DP, like I said, is a lot more intuitive. You can code this with memoization, but I think bottom up DP makes a lot more sense. Just starting over here and then going over here and over here and over here and looping, looping and checking all the numbers before it. I think it's like I said, maybe like in the 5% of problems where bottom up DP is easier than um, top down. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. So this is going to be n log n, like they asked um, in this follow up thingy. So again, and space. So we do have the stack, right? So it'll be O of N because like, let's say uh, we already have like a completely increasing sequence already or something that would just be the whole array. So yeah, uh, definitely a, a core problem to know. And I think if you look at like companies, yeah, you can see it's like super, super popular um, because it's basically just like a classic DP question. So yeah, definitely would recommend making sure you know this one. Um, I, I don't even know if I coded this up with memoization before, to be honest. Like, I just thought bottom up is like a lot easier. So let me know your thoughts on that. And if this was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.